appointments at thedentureexperts.com or 480-275-6284. Hospice of the Valley, a not-for-profit community hospice for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. HOV.org. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. If you are 60 or over, consider a charitable gift annuity with Arizona PBS. A charitable gift annuity will provide you a steady stream of income during your lifetime and also help ensure that Arizona PBS is available for future generations. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Michael Crow here, President of Arizona State University. I just want to say thank you to all of our PBS viewers. You all are taking the time to keep yourself up to date. You're taking the time to keep yourself active in learning. You're using the network and the university as a learning platform to advance your family. I think that's the way that everything's going to be moving in the future, and so we're really excited, and I just want to say thank you for watching Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, HOV.org. Deanne Griebel, now with Moores and Cabot Investments, serving investors since 1890, proudly supports quality programming on 8 Arizona PBS, 480-725-9602. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. We have an inside look from the community meeting where Flagstaff residents raised their voices about gun reform. And the push for the border wall continues. Arizona Representative Martha McSally is talking money for border protections. And national employment rates are on the rise. How much has changed in Arizona? Coming up. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Gabriel Gamino. And I'm Nicole Costantino. Thank you for joining us. We're talking policy after Parkland. For the city of Flagstaff, the issue of gun control hits home. In 2015, Northern Arizona University had a deadly shooting on campus. Nicole Gutierrez reports a meeting last night at NAU gave community members a chance to voice their opinions on gun control to city officials. Flagstaff community members Blackstaff community members attended a room that was on a school campus that has gone through a school shooting. In this room, they voiced their concerns to Flagstaff officials where they hope to continue the gun control movement. A lot of these shootings are at schools, at colleges, and so I think it's important that the people who are being affected are the ones addressing it. The Northern Arizona University Young Democrats hosted a public meeting at NAU in efforts to keep the discussion going on gun control. We grew up their whole lives with seeing this pandemic, uh, an epidemic of gun violence. The mayor of Flagstaff stressed the importance on demanding responsible gun ownership and requesting universal background checks. I think this is something that weighs on everybody's mind, at least it should be, you know, and then we need to do something. Because how sad is it that you have students who are afraid to go to school? It's a hard pill to swallow. Um, it's so difficult to know that that could have been us. Some students who attended the meeting stated they wanted to hear if their local officials will fuel the movement as well. We've had enough of school shootings and gun violence and something has to be done and that could be gun control, mental health care, whatever, it just something needs to happen in our country. Panelists at the meeting stated they hope the youth continues to spark change. A lot of times we talk about generation, what is it, X, Y, and Z, and that they're not engaged. Well, now we see that those generations can be engaged. 
Mayor Evans hopes the movement goes beyond words and even encourages the youth in the movement to run for office. In the Media Center, Nicole Gutierrez, Cronkite News. Arizona Senator John McCain says you, today's U.S. sanctions against Russia for election interference were long overdue. He called on the Trump administration to quickly implement the financial sanctions on those named in the special counsel's indictment, as well as organizations in the oil and gas sectors. In a statement, McCain wrote, financially squeezing the Kremlin kleptocracy, which has stolen countless billions of dollars from the Russian people, is the only way to ensure that Putin and his cronies feel the consequences for their destabilizing activities. Just two days after President Donald Trump visited San Diego to inspect prototypes of his planned border wall, a House subcommittee asked the question, what do we get for $33 billion? Cronkite News reporter Austin Bundy in our Washington bureau was there for today's debate. Democrats on the House Homeland Security Committee, like Texas Congressman Philemon Vela, believe the wall is a waste of time and taxpayer money. Of the $33 billion in investments identified in this plan, approximately 55% of these taxpayer dollars are meant to build a big, beautiful border wall. That seems unusually disproportionate given what we have heard in testimony. Acting Deputy Commissioner for U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Ronald Viteo, would not guarantee that a wall will completely halt border crossers, but he said the president's plan would help address the problems faced by Border Patrol agents. Where we have the investment in a complete fashion, technology, infrastructure, mobility to the border, we will be much more effective. Tucson Representative Martha McSally argued the wall shouldn't be such a polarizing issue, noting that previous administrations have called for replacement barriers across the southern border. Uh, lots of miles of uh, replacement fencing and some additional barriers, uh, wall barriers uh, approved under previous administrations. So this has been a consistent element of what the operators have asked for. In Washington, Austin Bundy, Cronkite News. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake told a Washington audience today that he wants to see a traditional conservative run for president in 2020. Could that candidate be Flake himself? He's not saying. Ariana Bustos brings us more from our Washington Bureau. For months now, Flake's dissatisfaction with President Donald Trump and the direction of the Republican Party has been well known. He ramped up that criticism today, calling on his party members to speak up and loudly. It seems at times that uh, speaking in measured tones in the face of the routine vandalism to our democratic norms is about the same as whispering into a hurricane. Flake addressed the National Press Club today on the current state of politics and focused especially on the importance of free speech and speaking out against injustice. He urged Republican Party members to face the realities of the current presidential administration. If we are going to refuse to live in the world that everyone else lives in, and reckon with the daily reality that they face, including their very real and understandably or understandable anxiety that they feel, then my party might not deserve to lead. When asked about a potential run for president in 2020, Flake didn't rule out the possibility, but said he'd like a conservative like him to run. Running for president is not in my plans, but I have not ruled anything out. Um, I do think that there should be a conservative challenge. I think if for no other reason, uh, Republicans want to be reminded, I think, of what conservatism really means. Flake is scheduled to be the featured speaker at the Politics and Eggs Breakfast tomorrow morning in New Hampshire, a regular stop for would-be presidential candidates in a competitive primary state. Reporting from Washington, Adiana Bustos, Cronkite News. Arizona State Treasurer Jeffrey DeWitt is now the chief financial officer for NASA. The United States Senate unanimously confirmed his nomination, which was announced by President Donald Trump in November 2017. DeWitt is a first-term Republican and worked on President Trump's 2016 campaign as chief operating officer. He will resign from his position, which will be filled by another Republican candidate, appointed by Arizona Governor Doug Ducey. Employment numbers continue to improve both in Arizona and across the nation. While Arizona's January jobless rate was still slightly higher than the national rate of 4.1 percent, experts still point to gains the state has made. Cronkite News reporter Shelby Lindsay takes a closer look at the numbers. 
Jobless rates in Arizona fell to 4.8 percent in January, according to the latest reports from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That is a far cry from the 10 percent unemployed in 2010. Garrick Taylor, spokesman for the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, said we have to remember where we started. We've had a, a steeper hill to climb. With that said, we have made tremendous progress in the state over the last decade. But William Spriggs, chief economist at the AFL-CIO, said the U.S. economy still has a long way to go. We are not back to where wages would have been if we had not gone through the downturn. Uh, we still don't have median income fully back to 2000. But in Arizona, at least, Taylor says the future of jobs looks promising. There are a number of third-party validators out there who have put Arizona in the top 10 for uh, projected job growth over the coming years. Taylor pointed to the Nikola Motor Company announcement that it will add a manufacturing facility to the West Valley to make hydrogen electric semi-trucks. They are projecting nearly 2,000 jobs from this $1 billion investment. This is, this is really exciting both from a manufacturing standpoint, a new economy standpoint with this clean fuel technology. This is, we're, these are really good, exciting things that are happening. In February alone, employers added 313,000 jobs nationwide, when the economy only needs 150,000 new jobs each month to keep expanding. Spriggs said this is a step forward, but not the end of the problem. It is another indicator that the labor market is healing. Uh, they should take with a huge grain of salt, you know, this is historically low numbers. Reporting in Washington, Shelby Lindsay, Cronkite News. A new state bill could provide clean needles to IV drug addicts. But it's not without controversy. Coming up on Cronkite News, hear from the organization that's now operating outside the law. And a bridge collapse at a Florida International University has caused multiple deaths and injuries. Cronkite News has the latest on the fatal incident next. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. children of planet Earth. Exploring, that's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we gonna see when we get really close? Wow. Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. Several people have been killed in the collapse of a bridge at Florida International University. The bridge was still under construction and not yet open to pedestrians. The injuries and fatalities came from the cars crashed underneath the bridge. The Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Division chief spoke earlier about the rescue operations after the collapse. At approximately 1.30 this afternoon, we received a call for a collapsed bridge. Our units responded to find eight trapped vehicles under the bridge. Uh, at this time, we've transported eight victims to hospitals. 
Officials say crews are drilling holes into the debris to look for survivors. Arizona may soon join 30 other states in allowing needle exchange programs for IV drug users. But as Taylor Marie explains, the bill is not without controversy. House Bill 2389 would allow organizations to establish and operate a program for clean needle and syringe exchanges. Grace Boardman is the site coordinator for the nonprofit organization Shot in the Dark. Her organization currently provides clean needles but operates in a gray area. The bill would remove that illegality. The main thing that it would do is keep the little police friction that we have away. Um, it would basically no longer be illegal for us to be existing in a public space. Providing clean needles helps reduce hepatitis and other blood-borne diseases. It's a really good bill. Representative Rivero had a lot of courage to introduce it, um, and it is it has been pretty well received and supported. But Bill Montgomery told KJZZ he's against needle exchange programs. He said, quote, it's a well-intentioned, misguided program. We don't have a free case of beer a month program for alcoholics. It sends the wrong message, and it's not providing the treatments. But despite the criticism, Boardman said she is passionate about this bill since opioids have been in the hands of people she loves. Almost everybody that I know and love like, has gone through addiction, specifically opiate addiction, because there's no like, barriers on, on who like, opiates touch. The bill would also require the exchange programs to offer disposal of used needles and provide educational materials on overdose prevention, HIV, and AIDS. In Tempe, Taylor Murray, Cronkite News. The bill passed the House and is awaiting a hearing in the Rules Committee. A break in a water line in the Grand Canyon leads to some new restrictions. Details coming up, plus a different type of threat in our national parks. It's facing a threat from thieves. It's stealing from the American people. Um, these parks protect the natural and cultural resources and the history of, um, that belongs to all of us. I'll explain what they're doing and how they're trying to curb the problem coming up. Cloudy skies through Phoenix today. Are we going to be seeing some rain chances down here or some snow up in the high country? I've got your seven day forecast coming up. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. Grand Canyon National Park is in level two water restrictions today. These restrictions look to conserve water after a series of breaks in the Trans Canyon water line. 
Under level two water restrictions, the park and its partners will be using only disposable dishes and utensils, serving water by request only, practicing low water use methods for hotel cleaning and l using low flow applications. National parks are created to preserve treasured land, but they're facing an unnatural threat. Tonight, we continue our access across Arizona series heading to two national parks in the state. Petrified Forest National Park and Saguaro National Park. As Cronkite News reporter Tyler Finger to found out, theft is a problem plaguing parks across the country. Across the desert landscape, their silhouette is unmistakable. The saguaros can be quite tall and it makes you feel really small. We took one picture with both of us because it was massive. Like, you know, I would never have dreamed they got that big. At Saguaro National Park near Tucson, cacti are the main attraction. You feel like you're so much a part of the desert and just surrounded by these um, beautiful cactuses. But the park's namesake cactus is facing a threat from thieves. It's ironic that we set aside great places like Saguaro National Park and people think that they can just come take the iconic cactus for which the park is named. It's not a problem that's happening every day, um, but it's an ongoing problem. While the park doesn't have specific numbers on how many cacti have disappeared, they say they know it's happening because they found holes where cacti used to stand. Kevin Dahl works with the National Parks Conservation Association. He says being a cactus thief can be lucrative. Each one can fetch 100 bucks or more per foot. It's ab absolute robbery uh, and it's absolute criminal activity and it's for profit. Uh, a, a mature saguaro in a landscape adds something to the value of the home or the business that's for sale or rent. To try to prevent theft, the National Park Service has turned to technology, putting tiny passive trackers in some of their cacti, allowing them to identify ones stolen from the park. Of the roughly 1.9 million saguaro cacti, only 1,000 of them are tagged, the ones easily accessible and easily transplanted. The trackers, which are similar to pet microchips, don't actively broadcast a signal. So if a cactus goes missing, the only way to know if it's from the park is to scan it using a reader. Our biggest um, hope is that, that, that it's a deterrent, that people recognize that if they steal cacti from Saguaro National Park, that there's a chance that we're going to be able to identify that that cactus came from the park. Theft is also an issue at Petrified Forest National Park. Bill Parker leads the natural and cultural resources team there. At one point, the park estimated 12 tons of petrified wood were being walked off with every year. But now they say the problem isn't as bad as first thought. The resource is still intact and in really good shape. Some people do still take wood and we catch them and give them tickets. Um, but whole areas aren't being stripped clean as was thought in the past. The park turned to photography to test the theory, taking century old photographs and recreating them. And the results? If you look at photos from today, most of the artifacts are still intact. It's a souvenir that people want, uh, but one thing the photography project has showed us is that most people do the right thing. Well, they say wood theft is not a problem here at the park. They do have signs up on trails warning people not to take it. While technology is helping to track natural resources, education is still a huge part of keeping parks pristine. To make sure that visitors understand the national parks are saved by the people, for the people. It's a selfish thing when, when someone um, does an act of vandalism or steals something from a national park. And uh, it, it's selfish and it's an act against the American public. Pieces of American history being taken from some of America's most treasured land. At Petrified Forest National Park, Tyler Finger, Cronkite News. Things have really been breezy out there today. How fast are the winds blowing out there? Yeah, Gabe, so we saw winds about 15 miles per hour and we had gusts even as high as 20 miles per hour today. But even though those winds aren't going to be sticking around to tomorrow, we are going to be seeing some precipitation chances. So we're going to be seeing the uh, northern part of our country have some snow today, but it shouldn't stay for long. But as we're going to be seeing some clouds enter the southern part of our state tomorrow, which is going to bring some cooler temperatures. So let's 
Let's look at our statewide highs for tomorrow. 72 here in Phoenix, up in the Grand Canyon, 48 degrees and 44 in Flagstaff and down south in Tucson at about 71. For our evening forecast, we're going to be dropping into those high 50s for our low today. But uh, let's take a look at our seven day forecast starting out for our weekend. We're going to be seeing those temperatures drop into the 60s, not too low at 69 on Sunday. And then as we jump into our work week, we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise back up into those 80s by the middle of next week. And coming up, we have interviews with Arizona State men's basketball team after their first four loss last night. How the team feels about their last game and what they're planning for next season. This fall. I'm so excited. What? <laughs> from the inspiring to the amazing. We're in the presence of history. The compelling. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. To the astounding. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> and from the breathtaking. This is real. A journey to Mars. To the electrifying. We're going to change the world. All this and more. All this fall. Oh, my God. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. show where we tackle the taboo and debate the tough questions with some of the most interesting minds in the game. I'm Carlos Watson, Electrifying Conversation, Friday, only on PBS. The NCAA men's basketball tournament round of 64 began today with Arizona State already eliminated. Chancellor Johnson was in Dayton last night for the Sun Devils' final game of the season. ASU's game versus Syracuse played out like their season did. Plenty of high moments, a boatload of threes, but in the end, a disappointing finish. We got what we wanted. We were up seven, what, six minutes ago. It was our game to win, but it isn't it? It's a symbol of how life is. It's up and down, but you gotta learn how to bounce back. ASU learned a lot this season and hopes to build on it next year. The Sun Devils will return six scholarship players, add two more transfers, and they currently boast a recruiting class that is ranked 19th in the nation. Credit to the seniors, um, they led the way, but it was an amazing ride, and uh, we'll be back next year. The class brand is gonna have a great mark on this program, and the seniors, we're gonna have you know, a bright future, so. You know, I think it's only going up from here. ASU season ended Wednesday night with an overall record of 20 and 12, dropping the curtain on a wild ride. In Dayton, Chester Johnson, Cronkite News. The University of Arizona is a fourth seed in the tournament. The Wildcats are scheduled to play their first game tonight against the Buffalo Bulls. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up next on the Arizona Horizon and the PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, hear from a state lawmaker who is sponsoring a number of gun control bills. An art detour celebrates 30 years of Phoenix Artist Studio open houses. That's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. The embattled head of Veterans Affairs faces questions on Capitol Hill. That's Thursday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.